Today on The Real Story, we catch up with Congresswoman Johanna Hayes, her efforts in Washington to address food insecurity in kids and extending SNAP benefits born out of her own experiences growing up. Plus, she's gotten the attention of the National Republican Congressional Committee, what she thinks about that. Congresswoman Johanna Hayes is our guest. And calls for change in Connecticut. Republicans saying enough is enough. They want a special session to make changes to Connecticut's juvenile justice system. That was followed by a bipartisan meeting between House leaders about reform. So what was discussed? Are they on the same page? Today, State Representative and Republican Craig Fishbein and State Representative Democrat Stephen Staffstrom will join us. Plus, Wilkett's Police Chief Edward Stevens will also give us a perspective on what his officers are seeing. Good morning and thanks for joining us on The Real Story. I'm Jen Bernstein. Well, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes is deep into her term right now in Congress. The committees she's on reflect her experience as a teacher in her home city of Waterbury. Congresswoman Hayes on the House Committee on Education and Labor, as well as the House Committee on Agriculture. And earlier this year, she was named as chair of the House Agriculture Subcommittee on Nutrition Oversight and Department Operations. She's introduced two bills that she has said will hope to close the food insecurity gap in America. One of them, making sure kids who are raised by grandparents or someone other than their parents can still receive free school meals under the Care for Kids Act. Plus, she's also proposing expanding and strengthening SNAP, which stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. What's interesting about both of these pieces of legislation is that they are deeply personal to her own life experiences. So let's talk about them with her this morning. Good morning to you, Congresswoman. Good morning, Jen. Thanks so much for having me. So first of all, can you just explain to viewers this subcommittee? What do they deal with? The subcommittee on the full committee of agriculture, um, it's called the NOTO subcommittee, Nutrition Oversight and Department Operations, deals with all food security programs like SNAP, um, our food pantries, food banks, any federal assistance, and also oversight of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So the upcoming farm bill, much of what is going to be happening in Congress is going to come through this committee. And now you are chairing this committee, and you spoke, I think it was in May, um, in front of the committee, and you did discuss how some of these programs helped you in your lifetime. These are personal to you, SNAP benefits, and uh, you were saying that you were raised by your grandmother, correct? Absolutely, and I think the thing that is so important to me about this committee is to really change the face of who beneficiaries are. I think that there is this false narrative of it's people who don't want to work, people who want to live on government assistance. For me, as I said in committee, I was working two jobs and going to school full time and still qualified for benefits. And that is the experience of so many of our families. The majority of people who receive SNAP benefits or food stamps are children. So we have to make sure that we are supporting families as they get to the point where they are self-sustaining and, and, and can work and support their own families. But so much of this program is outdated, antiquated, um, and relying on information that is old. And it does look like you're having some bipartisan support, especially I was reading with the Care for Kids Act, which is good news. What is it like to be in charge of this committee that you can influence and have a say in some of these programs that you had directly benefited from at one point in your life? It is just life-changing uh, just on a very small level in the first hearing it was very important to me that i had recipients come in to testify for themselves generally when we have these congressional hearings we bring in policy analysts and advisors and all of these people but i wanted my colleagues to hear from the people who were directly impacted that seems like a really small um, change, but it's different than how it's generally done. 
also to be able to really, there's some really common sense gaps that we can close. At the beginning of the pandemic, just making um, people who receive food stamps eligible for online delivery services for food, you know, small things like that, making sure that we could get kids who were not in school or were at, or having instruction delivered remotely, still have school meals uh, available to them. There's so many things that we have the ability in Congress to change, but we have to have the will and, and just believe in these types of programs to do it. So for me to be able to not only set the calendar, but invite witnesses and work with my Republican colleagues and really help them to understand, because I was very happy about how the, the hearing went. Um, as even my Republican colleagues, when they heard from these witnesses, there was a consensus. We have to do something about this. So for me, that was a great place to start for a first hearing. I want to touch on a piece of legislation that you voted for as well, uh, having to do with the January 6th insurrection. You voted uh, to support getting a select committee to investigate the attacks uh, on the Capitol that happened back in January. Uh, this was largely along party lines in the House, except two Republicans, including Representative Liz Cheney among them, uh, did vote for the legislation. I know House Speaker Nancy Pelosi currently was going to be appointing members to that committee. What are you hearing? What's the latest on that? Well, it's actually even unfortunate that we had to get to a select committee, because if you remember back in May, we had a vote that failed the House on a bipartisan um, piece of legislation that had was created by both Republicans and Democrats. It would have had equal number, equal numbers of Republican and Democrat committee members. It, they would have had subpoena powers to investigate what happened on January 6th. And even though Republicans were involved at every stage of the process, they selected who would be a part of this committee. When the vote came to the floor, they voted against it um, because they didn't like the scope. They wanted it to to expand and cover more things. Um, this committee is about January 6th. We have a responsibility as members of Congress to investigate what happened on January 6th and to ensure that it never happens again. The attack on the Capitol is different than, a diff than any other attack. It was, and not just that it happened, but it happened during the certification of a presidential election. No Republican or Democrat should want to see that happen again. And we should, we all have a responsibility to make sure that it never happens again. Um, we voted last week for this select committee. I voted in support of it. The speaker has named the members of the committee and they are set to start work immediately. Um, this committee has to wrap up their work by December. So um, it is going to be critical that over the next couple of months, they subpoena witnesses, they gather testimony um, and really look at the intelligence flaws and, and the things that allowed this to happen. And I'm happy that we are doing this as a Congress because people are asking me, how did this happen and what are you doing to make sure it doesn't happen again? Yeah, I mean, you were there. We had we did a whole real story about your experiences at the Capitol that day. I remember you saying that your son was there as well with you. Uh, tell me, does this committee have any teeth? You know, once the investigation is done, you say they have to present in December. What happens after that? Um, I think the committee does have teeth because there will be, I mean, at the very least, they'll be able to subpoena people and present the information before the American public. This is more than politics, this is more than parties. This is something that it is in our best interest to make sure we have all of the information. Um, I, I think a little bit different than some of the other committees or investigations that we've, we've um, gathered during my time. It's important that the American people have access to all of the information and what happened, and then that we're able to use that information to close those security gaps. Um, we voted on supplemental security packages for Capitol Police. We voted to support their force with training and to make sure that they're fully staffed. And all of those votes came as a result of the information that we're learning from January 6th. Um, I think it's important that we know where the cracks are so that we know how to fill them. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of this, but you are on the radar of the National Republican Congressional Committee. Uh, we noticed recently that we've gotten some email blasts from them. They've been kind of targeting you uh, in a lot of ways. The most recent one uh, saying Johanna Hayes is defending critical race theory. Uh, we got another one who pinning you with Nancy Pelosi about the bipartisan infrastructure bill before it was passed, saying, does Johanna agree with Pelosi that House Democrats should blow up a bipartisan bill?
Um, there's a few going back here now. So I'm, I'm curious of what you think. You're on their radar. I guess it's a compliment that they're looking at your seat specifically. Well, you're absolutely right. The National Republicans um, included me in their top five Northeast uh, seats to target. And I do see it as a compliment because they are threatened by the work that I'm doing. I have been able to, actually the entire Connecticut delegation really had an outsized influence in this Congress. Every single member of the de delegation is a committee chair or subcommittee chair. With the American Rescue Plan, we brought back millions of dollars to the state of Connecticut with no Republican support in either the House or the Senate. Um, we have the infrastructure package. I have five shovel-ready projects that are that will come back to my district, about $17.5 million. Um, I welcome uh, candidates. I, I want us to have a robust conversation, but the challenge is, is there's no proposed solutions. There's no ideas. So the only attack on me, I mean, they're personal attacks there, um, but nothing that, I, I think the people in this district are a lot smarter than that. They want to hear options and answers. And, you know, I, I welcome anyone who wants to hold me accountable for this seat. I welcome just the opportunity to put my work on display, but that is going to be my strategy to just work really, really hard and present that to the people. Um, but you're right, the national Republicans have really taken an interest. They are spending money in this district, running ads against me, sending out blasts, sending out uh, emails uh, almost on a weekly basis. I consider it a compliment that as a second term Congresswoman that I am that threatening to a national um, Republican party that they want to target this seat. Yeah, so and al also they're looking at, oh, I'm sorry, you cut out. I did not mean to, to cut you off there. Um, also, you know, they're obviously looking at your seat, which has gone Republican before, but not in a long time, right? I mean, it's been, it's been Democrat for a while now. So they'll be looking at that as a possible battleground compared to the other districts in Connecticut. And this seat is, I mean, this district is not overwhelmingly Democrat. It's about um, it's about a 50-50 split, and there's a whole lot of independence, and that's why I try to legislate in a way that gets to the issues. Um, I've never first identified as a Democrat. Before I went to Congress, this is the first time where people are overly concerned about the letter behind my name. Um, my office closes 82% of all of our casework uh, for constituents. We brought back close to $15 million to this district for Republicans and Democrats alike. And I've really tried to stay focused on that because this di Connecticut 5 is not an overwhelmingly Democrat district. Um, and I really believe that the people vote on the issues that they care about. All right, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes, thank you so much for your time this morning. Always good to catch up. Thank you. All right, coming up on The Real Story, the battle over Connecticut's juvenile justice system. Republicans calling for lawmakers to act after carjackings and car thefts and several other incidents linked to Connecticut's youth. Their demands and how a bipartisan meeting went between Democrats and Republicans, plus a police chief's perspective. State Representatives Craig Fishbein, Stephen Staffstrom, and Wilkett Police Chief Edward Stevens joins us.